promised in the last video, today we're giving the M52 B28 engine a good refresh. Following the inspection in the previous video with the boroscope, I determined that in the interest of getting this car to move under its own power as soon as possible, this engine really is good to go. When I was looking at it in a bit more detail, I can find no reasons to want to rush into a, a full engine rebuild or anything that serious. The goal now is to get this engine into the E30 as soon as possible and see if I can actually get it to run. However, whilst the engine's out of the car, I absolutely can't miss the opportunity to change things like seals and wear items because it's just going to be so much easier now. Also, because I've got such a nice clean and shiny engine bay, I can't bear to put this dirty engine in as is, so I'm going to give it a good cosmetic refresh. This video might be a little bit fragmented because I've got parts on order and some have arrived and some haven't, but the paint has arrived and I've got my wire brushes so I can crack on cleaning this engine up and getting it painted in in engine enamel and VHT paint. Other things I'm planning to do in this video include extracting a stuck exhaust stud, which is a bit of a showstopper until it's removed. I'll probably do that before applying any paint. Also, I'm going to be changing the valve cover gasket, the thermostat and thermostat housing, the water pump, the crank position sensor, the sump gasket, uh, even a locking nut on the oil pump, and potentially a couple of other things that I haven't even remembered just now. But I I think I have made my decision on which sump I'm going to use and I'm planning to use my modified E34 sump that's a bit shallower to avoid speed humps in the future. I think it seems to be a fairly safe route to take from reading online and I think it might save me a lot of frustration later because after all, once this engine's in the bay, to change the sump pan is an engine out job so I'm hoping to start as I mean to go on. Speaking of which, I think I'm going to start by refreshing that sump and also the oil filter housing, which I do actually have a new seal for. So I'll start small and then I'll move on to the big stuff, which is the, the main block of the engine. So let's get cracking.
Right, so that's the, the sump, idler pulley, oil filter housing and power steering pump all in paint and uh, curing as we speak. So the next thing to do is get to the block. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I do have exhaust studs to extract. One of them snapped off and looks like it's going to cause me a bit of a problem. So the first thing I need to do before I even consider starting to wire brush this and get it ready for paint is try and extract all these studs, especially this one that's snapped. I am planning to replace all the studs, so I'm hoping to extract them all to be honest but this is the one that's concerning me the most. Now, by chance, I do have two M7 nuts. The trouble is, because of the way this one snapped, it's not quite long enough for me to thread both nuts on to start trying to lock them together to attempt to undo it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go straight in and weld on a nut, and hopefully, with that heat and with a nut really firmly on it, I'll be able to just twiddle it out and it'll come straight out. That's the idea anyway. Ooh, hot. Oh, oh, looks like we're in business. Got very lucky with those exhaust studs. It actually couldn't have worked out better. They all came out and even the snapped one came out relatively easy in the grand scheme. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the engine over and I'm actually gonna show you a modification that I'm gonna do. The modification in question is actually to this oil pump sprocket nut. Now, these nuts are notorious for working themselves off over time, especially if you've got a particularly hard driven engine. And once it drops off, it obviously stops the chain from driving the oil pump, which then starves the entire engine from, an, from the oil supply and kills the engine. So it's, it's terminal and it's well worth avoiding. The solution is an aftermarket nut, which has a teeny little hole drilled through it and a lock wire and obviously you lock wire it to the, the holes in the sprocket. Now it's worth noting that this is a left-handed thread. So if you jump on and start trying to undo it lefty-loosey lefty as normal, you might actually damage the threads on the, 
on the pinion. So this should be a nice, easy, quick modification for peace of mind in the future. Hopefully, my small impact gun is gonna just whip this nut off without any resistance. Let's have a go. It's a 17. For extra peace of mind, I'm gonna stick a few drops of red Loctite on it just to, to really seal it on. I've given the threads a really good wipe down just to remove any oils that will prevent the Loctite from sealing. So let's put a couple of drops on now. Now I need to torque it up to 18 foot pound or 25 Newton meters. And that's a bit more than you expect, so I'm going to get the old man to kindly hold the crank to prevent the whole engine from turning whilst I'm tightening this. Now you've got to keep reminding yourself that it's uh, lefty tighty, because it's the habit of a lifetime. Scary, scary tight on something like this. Starting to... I've just realised that going counterclockwise, this torque wrench actually doesn't give me a click, so it wasn't telling me that it was torqued up to the right tightness. Luckily, when I set it to 25 newton meters, I did test it, so I knew to stop when I thought it felt a bit strange that it was going so tight. I've probably slightly over-tightened this, unfortunately, but it looks good, and I guess it's not going anywhere. So let's now get onto the lock wiring. But that, let that be a warning to you, if you're jumping straight in with a torque wrench, make sure it will click going counterclockwise, otherwise you're at risk of really causing some damage. So I'm going to feed the lock wire through that little hole in the nut, and I'm going to lock it to one of the spokes on this sprocket in the direction of tightening, just to prevent it from working its way loose. So again, I need to keep reminding myself that it's left-handed thread. While I'm in the area of the oil pump, I'm going to switch out the pickup. Now, this one is already an E34 front sump oil pickup. And because I'm using a shortened version of that to avoid speed humps, I've got a modified one that should pair with the sump, which is drying in paint at the moment. So I'm going to quickly switch this out and I'm keen to test fit the sump as well, just to confirm that it all does work together because sometimes you have some nasty surprises with parts somebody else has modified, but let's hope there's no surprises today.
Well, it's the next day and we've just popped in to remove some of the masking. The block is looking fantastic. I'm really happy with how that black engine enamel went on and it's given a really nice, glossy, hard shell finish. I think it was helped somewhat by the fact this is an aluminium block so there wasn't any big nasty scabs of rust like you often get on, a, on an iron block. And with it being proper engine enamel paint, I have good faith that it's going to stand the test of time and it's not going to flake off when it gets hot for the first time or anything like that. Regarding the silver VHT paint I used to paint the sump, I'm, I was a lot less happy with the result on this. It ended up really, really dusty and I was quite frustrated because every time I touched it the paint was pretty much coming off in my hand. I think that's more my fault than the paint's fault, I'm just using it for the wrong application. It's for like exhaust headers and things like that rather than larger things like sumps. So what I did was I ended up washing it off with thinners basically and starting over with a, a silver, a, like a satin silver paint which is actually for brake calipers so there should be some heat resistance and it should, uh, should be quite hardcore paint. And after doing that I'm very happy with how the sump and the oil filter housing came out too. Now although the head's clean and it's tempting to just leave it in its aluminium silver finish they corrode quite quickly so I'm definitely going to paint it. In a fun nod to BMW motorsport engines of the past I've decided to do something a bit different and try and paint this head gold. I think it'll contrast nicely with the black. But before I get on to that I have some good news. The guys at Teslong must have seen my last video where I was complaining about the old man's crappy 10 year old boroscope and they've sent me out one of theirs to try. I'm excited to get a higher resolution look at the tops of the pistons in this engine and it's even got a little mirror fitting which might mean we can even get a glimpse of the bores which is something I was unable to do last time. So let's take it to the bench, crack it open and I'll show you what's in the box. Well, for starters, what a contrast this is on the other one. This, uh, it looks much, much higher quality and way sturdier. It's quite handy that the, um, the wire is stiff so you can get it in a position that you want to keep it in, which uh, would be a godsend, especially if you're feeding it in to find a blockage or something like that if you were plumbing, which I was doing recently. Also comes with adapters for iPhone and a little set of attachments like a hook if you were trying to fish something out that had dropped into your engine or there's a little mirror in there as well that should enable me to look sideways we'll give that a try in just a minute most importantly though let's have a look at what the image quality looks like right so the app is now installed and it just bursts into life when you plug it in which is good let's have a look down into cylinder one I can see straight away that the uh, LED is a lot brighter too which is good with this extra resolution, I'm not sure, but I might be seeing some things I uh, I don't want to see. If that is scoring, it looks quite light. Yeah, you can see that WD-40 running down. <laughs> might have overdone that a bit. Right, let's see if we can get a better look at the bores using that mirror attachment. This is the mirror attachment I was talking about. Hopefully that will enable us to see the bores. It's good that it screws on firmly, you don't want don't to lose it down in there. Looking back down into cylinder number one, which is actually the worst looking one now. You can see all that oil and WD-40 I've uh, been putting in over the past couple of years has all been unsettled by me messing about with this engine, which is which doesn't look good, but at least it isn't rusting. And the worst thing I can find in any of the cylinders is this score mark, which is probably accentuated by by the uh, high resolution of this camera. To be honest. I don't think it's anything worth worrying about too much, but it doesn't look quite as new in here looking in this, looking with this new camera 
as it did when I was looking with that crap one. <laughs> Ignorance isn't always bliss though. But yeah, very pleased with the camera. I'm gonna get a lot of use out of that, I can tell already. And the mirror fitment is genius. Well, thanks again to the guys at Test Long. I can see us getting a lot of use out of that. I think I'll send it back for the old man to have a look into his bike engines with. I suspect he'll be entertained for hours. So with that, we'll get the engine swapped over, upside down again, get the windage tray back on, get the sump on, get that buttoned up, and then we can turn our attention to getting this head painted. Right. Which way are you going? To prevent any future oil leaks, I've got some of the old man's super sticky secret sauce here. I'm going to put a thin smear of it on the rubber part of this new sump gasket on both sides and then we'll get the sump buttoned down for good.
So that's the oil filter housing back on the engine now, including the alternator and the power steering pump. I even chucked in the oil filter ready for its first dash of oil, hopefully in the very near future. Now I'm going to move on to the water pump and this is where I'm doing a, a little nice upgrade over the standard. So I've gone for this male version of the water pump which has a metal impeller which is an upgrade over BMW's standard equipment water pump which has a plastic impeller. I've always used these when I can and I've been very happy with them so I'll continue that with this. Before I stick the pulley onto the water pump, just in case it gets in the way, I'm going to first stick on the thermostat housing and thermostat. And here's another minor upgrade that I'm going to do. So if you remember the thermostat housing that came off was plastic and I'm going to upgrade it to this aluminium one because the plastic ones are known to crack after a while and the one that came off certainly looked old and tired as they all will be the original ones at this point. Now, I also removed the 92 degree thermostat and I'm going to be replacing it with this 82 degree one which should just help keep the car cool because of course this engine is going to be in a slightly smaller engine bay than it was ever designed to be in really being in an E30. So just for peace of mind I'm going to have a thermostat that opens a bit earlier. So that's the face of the engine together now and it's looking really good. I'm quite happy with my little cooling upgrades and the aluminium thermostat housing fits really nicely for an aftermarket part. I'll make sure to link to that and the metal impeller water pump in the description for you. Before you mention it in the comments, I'm not actually planning to run a clutch fan which would thread onto the, to the water pump there. There's a, a convenient little cover that covers over the threads that I'll probably just leave there. I'm thinking about running an electric fan on the opposite side of the radiator in the E30 just to prevent radiator and clutch fan meeting which can happen in a crowded engine bay with a 24 valve engine. The next thing I'm hoping to do is get this valve cover on with the new gasket. Before I put the valve cover back on I'm just going to put a bit of oil on all the cam lobes just so I don't have to worry about it sitting dry for any length of time. I'm going to do that with a, with a brush.
Right, with that valve cover all buttoned up, I can move on to putting my new plugs in. If you remember from the previous video, I took out these Bosch Super Plus items and determined that they look like they've been running quite well in the engine. They're a bit grubby, but for peace of mind, I'm definitely going to replace them. And I've gone for NGK2288 BKR6EK. And that's as a result of a bit of research online that determined these are good plugs to use. I've had good experience with NGK plugs running them in my E46, so I kind of lean towards NGK. Uh, for no better reason than that. They're exactly the same type of plug as the Bosch ones with the, the twin prong. I resisted the temptation to go for fancy iridium ones because I just think they're unnecessary. I always like to run the OE style plug with any engine. I think I'm gonna to have to retire these shots from service. But anyway, that's the plugs in, the coils on, and now I'm gonna come back around to the front of the engine to put on the ox belt. This is 1,555 mil in length, and it's six rib. Hopefully, we can get it straight on. We need to take the tension off the idler pulley, and then see if it fits. It's not obvious yet, but I have a feeling I know how this goes. And to wrap up today's activities, I'm going to put this top cover on the engine, which I've been dying to put on for a very long time, and it only just seems appropriate. Although I may have something missing here because there's nothing that really holds it down. That's a shame, but I guess I can look that up in my own time and figure it out. I'm super satisfied with how this M52 engine's come out. It's actually the culmination of a few days of very hard graft. I'm absolutely knackered, but the results speak for themselves. Hopefully I can make it look effortless in the edit and it looks absolutely clean and clean enough for you to eat your dinner off if you wanted to. It's a shame the inside of the engine doesn't quite look as good as the outside now does, but I am very confident it's gonna run nicely once I've got it in the car. There's still plenty of work to do. For example, there's no exhaust manifold on, there's no studs for one even, and there's no intake manifold on either, but I'm planning to deal with those once the engine's actually in the car. So the next thing to do is turn my attention to the gearbox. Off camera, I've actually been working away to try and get that gearbox into a 
cosmetic condition similar to this engine ready to throw in and it's looking pretty good but I need to figure out how it goes on I need to figure out the clutch and the flywheel situation because I am planning to use a 318 IS gearbox but I'm going to go into a lot more detail on that in the next video so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that if you've enjoyed this video and found it satisfying seeing how this engine's come out make sure you give us a like and make sure you join us in the next video thank you very much for watching